We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. God sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swell the grain. The breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. Hello, everyone. This is Father Joe making a recording for the readings and reflections for this Sunday, uh, July 12th, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. And our first reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from the mouth of God. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to us to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but they do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people, they will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes lest they see with their eyes, and bear with their ears, and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Not that long ago, I was watching a, a show, a trivia show, and I rec- on the show, they asked a question about a word and a word meaning and an origin of a word. The word has come to mean to spread information out in a wide area or a wide audience or to disseminate information to a wide audience. Uh, This sense of the word became popular in the 1920s uh, as radio became more popular. (laughs) Do you remember radio? Not too many people perhaps listen to radio as much now, but uh, the word became more popular as did radio. But the word uh, in question originally meant to scatter seed across a wide area. And just as the radio would broadcast to a wide area of people, the seed was broadcast, was sent out, was scattered to a wide area. And the word is broadcast. I just let it slip out. The word broadcast to cast out, to cast into a broad area, to take the seed and to scatter it in a wide area. Uh, that's what's doing with now with radio broadcast and TV broadcast. But originally the word broadcast was meant to scatter seed to a broad area instead of planting it individually in each little spot. You're kind of throwing it all over. And broadcasting seed is how the sower in today's gospel is spreading the seed. Now, broadcasting seed could be wasteful, you know, because you could get it all over the place. Uh, It falls on different areas and on different types of soil, as told in today's gospel. If we think of, in the gospel today, if we think of God as the farmer or the sower and the seed as the kingdom of God, we can think of ourselves as the types of soil that it falls on. Um or the dirt it falls on. Now, it's not a flattering image, of course, to be compared to dirt, but the different soils can represent the different human receptions to God's kingdom. Now, God, in spreading out the seed, can be seen as generous as he's offering it to everyone, 
But the question really is, and Jesus' point is, how are we going to respond? Now, some people are like the soil on the footpaths. And Jesus, in interpreting the psalm, for the, the parable later for us in the same gospel today, it falls on hard, hardened surface. Um, it falls on a footpath, something that's so hardened that the seed could only just sit there. It can't penetrate. Uh, and we're told that the evil one takes it away. The seed wasn't received, in other words. It was, it was just removed. And it wasn't received, not because the person couldn't understand in the sense of, I don't understand this, I need to have understand more, I ask some questions about it. You can't fault someone for not understanding it at first. But it was taken away because the person did not want to understand it. They were hardened to it. In other words, the person was not receptive to the gift and for us, too, we don't want to take for granted the gift of the kingdom that has been given to us. Uh, you know, we sometimes get distracted or out of focus and lose sight of the gift. We don't want to take it for granted. And we don't want to stay also in that distracted or out of focus state because we might lose what we've been given. Other people are like the rocky ground, which is prevalent also in the Holy Land. It, the topsoil in places can be very thin. And so the seed sprouts too soon, but unprotected by deeper soil, it can't really sink roots. Uh, now, people are like that too. And people are like that, as Jesus talks about in the parable. They're enthusiastic, but there's no deep roots to help the person face up to the demanding aspects that will come in following the kingdom. Of course, we know well enough, uh, we need roots to grow. We need roots for nourishment. And no roots mean no life or no permanent life or long-term life. And so we need to nourish our roots. You know, for us, the roots are, are the sacraments and the Eucharist and confession, uh, prayer, living out the moral life, the reading of scripture. You know, in that first reading today from the prophet Isaiah, he speaks of how the word of God comes down like rain or snow, making the earth fruitful and fertile. It's a reminder to us, too, about the importance of reading Scripture each day, reading the Word of God, which, along with the others, the sacraments, the Eucharist, confession, prayer, living the moral life, all those things will help nourish us and nourish the roots to deepen so that we can allow the kingdom to grow and face the difficulties that come in living out the kingdom. A third type of person that's mentioned in the parable today is like the seed that fell among thorns, which also was a very familiar image to Jesus' crowd in his time. Um, the more arid parts of the Holy Land were uh, often strewn with thorns, and thorns were a constant problem. Now, these people in themselves, who are like this perhaps, possess the proper disposition for spiritual growth and allowing the seed to grow, but worldly cares or material cares choke them, stop them, prohibit them. We might add some other things, not just material cares, but our own perhaps dispositions uh, can, can uh, or living perhaps an immoral life. You know, these things can choke us. It's a reminder to us not to put those material concerns or those other idols that we set up in our life uh, above the kingdom. Now, of course, our material concerns are very real and we have to deal with them, but we have to put them in priority. We can't put them above our relationship with the Lord. And so we need to place these priorities in light of God's kingdom. St. Matthew, Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew earlier in an earlier passage reminds us, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given you besides, meaning the material things. And so we might ask ourselves, do we pray to uh, see God as our first priority? Do we pray to see our material concerns in the light of the kingdom of God? and our first priority. And then of course, the last group of people are the ones that kind of get it right. You know, the people who hear, who understand, they're receptive and they act on it, are those who produce the fruit, whether it be 30 or 60 or 100 fold. Now, sometimes in our lives, we can kind of be like all the soil types. We might be partly these soil types in different parts of our life. We may not want to understand and have the seed on a hard path or a hard heart. We might be enthusiastic, but not very deep, not real deep rooted. Uh, we might struggle with the thorns or those things in our lives that choke us. Uh, and also too, we might bear much good fruit, 
but through God's grace. And the living out of the kingdom of God and the growth in the spiritual life is a striving and is a struggle. And so that's why sometimes we might be different types of soil. But keep in mind, too, that as the broadcast style of planting, throwing it everywhere, might seem wasteful, it's also very generous. Uh, God's generosity, uh, God will generously send us the seed to be sown in our hearts. He'll broadcast it generously to us. And it, we, even if we have a hard time seeing it, he'll continually broadcast it out in a wide area for all of us. And even if we groan within ourselves, struggling with it, as St. Paul uses that expression in the second reading today, we groan within ourselves, awaiting redemption. Even if we groan, it means that we're engaged in the kingdom and engaged in the spiritual life to attain redemption and to attain the fullness of life in the world to come. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.